My name is Mike Garlier. And I'm Steve Jones. When Steps, The Backstreet Boys and Westlife dominated the pop charts, we decided to write a script. Based on our experiences as holiday entertainers. It sat in an attic for the last 16 years. How terrible is the writing? How awful will the acting be? Only you can help us decide. This is Bad Scripts. Hello and welcome to <laughs> what something I'm very excited about. And I know the man on the other side of the microphone, Mr. Mike Garlia, is happy about too. We are back for Bad Scripts Presents The Last Resort, the Halloween special. Ooh, ooh. I, I oh. promised I wouldn't do that. I promised I wouldn't do that. <laughs> And then I, I, I couldn't help it. I couldn't help it. I just did it. I just had an image of you holding a handbag up. Then it was like, ooh, rather than <laughs> it wasn't it wasn't that spooky, you know. Um, Mike, lovely to hear your voice as always. Hello, you know. <laughs> Hello. Um, we're, we're back. We we've had the movie club, so we've not really been anywhere. We've still been here, but you know what? The podcast has returned to its true form for a Halloween special. As in us reading another bad script. Hey, <laughs> our own bad script. Our own bad script. And and Mike, um we've we've written again. You know, I mean the premise of this this podcast was that this script was 18 years old. You know, it was our grown up child. We've had to go back and do it. How? You know, I mean we, we had that process, we had that writing thing. How did you feel picking up the proverbial pen again and taking the reins once more to bring these characters who our listeners know so well back to life? I think my fingers were sore from the pounding of the keyboard. So the difference between writing now and writing then is when we wrote then, we were sitting next to each other writing now it's over a screen and trying to uh, <laughs> me trying to keep up with your words you know like well we should do this and do that and like here's and i'm like i'm tapping away yeah. furiously going i can't keep up with you plus yeah. also um you know that was a month ago as well so you know we started writing this towards the early september and now we're in october and we're 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 celebrating halloween and going into our christmas period so how did it feel it felt great and it felt like stepping into something comfortable and nice because i don't know about you yeah i kind of feel like we know these characters really yeah. well it was weird wasn't it because it was something that we we knew so well and and like you say it was something really comfortable and welcoming and familiar like an old girlfriend it was you know just so nice <laughs> to be back inside again I never quite said um, that <laughs> <laughs> an old girlfriend like how old is she she's like well, 72 <laughs> i meant as in old to us you know as oh, in right. like a girlfriend well, like 72 all those years <laughs> yeah who knows you know be free be you know love who you want to love that's what they say all <laughs> <laughs> oh, the images in my brain now it's like some things stop. have changed since we last dated i've got my dentures in now <laughs> ooh, ooh. take them out take them out you know i prefer you without <laughs> oh dear we've descended into madness already mike it hasn't taken long we're back uh back on form um <laughs> let's let's think about this then so we've been may was the last time an episode of this script came out um 18 years since we put pen to paper these characters i don't know how you felt but for me there was a sense of responsibility now because these aren't just figments of our imagination now they're to some of our listeners they're they're real people they're out there and well, they're um you well, know, so much has happened so much has happened since the last episode in may so you know if we're gonna recap on our journey through this podcast as as our listeners will know we have um, been nominated and 
won a bronze award in a in a podcast um, award, which was lovely. And we've also extended our listenership across a load of different continents across the world. Um, and you know, we're, we're you know people are listening in lots of different places, far reach places that I never knew we would yeah. ever reach. Um, and we've released God knows how many movie episodes, um, which were you know like attributed to our characters. So. For me, it feels like a lot has happened since our last episode. A hundred percent. And our characters, it doesn't feel like two minutes. You know, when we started putting these these lines back into their, you know, the words into their mouths again, I felt a bit like a ventriloquist that was, you know, put my hand back in and just, it just came naturally to be able to Jesus. get it out You need there. to stop talking, Steve. <laughs> I'm not to trying to talking. be. I... <laughs> That's a problem when you're recording a podcast. You have to keep talking. And uh, <laughs> unfortunately, um, I have Where are you diarrhea. Going? It's like a ventriloquist when you put your fingers back in. It's just, it's a... <laughs> well, All right, you so know, maybe I say it's a ventriloquist. The um, we've, moved, we've moved on, obviously, because yeah. we're a lot older now. Our characters are still in that same place. The challenge is writing back to where our characters were, despite the fact that we've moved on. And I think, would you, would you say that was a bit of a challenge? I think at first it really was. And I thought, I think we were overthinking it at first. We started to try and be more specific. Clever. Yeah, too and, clever. And, well, and too detailed with some of it. So I think, you know, we talked about the certain elements and we won't say what they are. But when we started outlining things, we started to go into the, the the business detail, you know, the details, the things that people really don't care about. But but we have real life experience of now. So you start to bring those elements in for realism and then you have to take yourself away from that and go, guess what? People don't care. Let's let's just stick to the story and and stick and be pure to, to its to its origins. So that's well, ladies we- and gentlemen. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we've talked about Patreon before. And if you would ever like to hear the original treatment, which we wrote, which was very, very different to what we've actually produced, um, let us know and we'll sort something out and we'll give you a version of what could have been. But alas, Mm. we went back to our roots and decided, let's keep it really, really simple. Exactly. Let's do that. So, Mike, we probably need to recap what happened at the end of May. Because it's been some people, it's been a long time since they've heard it. Other people will be binging and they'll be, you know, right there from the, the episodes finished. Um, but let's give everybody a quick, brief recap of where we were. So um, maybe we can start with the couples, uh, so to speak, and we can sort of say where they are at the moment. So um, obviously, Dan and Donna are together um, and, and they seem okay. They seem absolutely fine. They seem solid in a relationship. Um, we've got Sam and Adam. Sam and Adam, there was a, obviously there, there was the whole turmoil of will they, won't they going on. And, and then they finally got talking again in the bar. Drinks flowing again, which seemed to be a theme throughout their uh, tumultuous uh, relationship. And they finally kissed they finally decided that being together is better than being apart. And that's wonderful. And and like you say, when Kelly still tries to be the queen bitch that she is, Hitler <laughs> punched <laughs> her in the face. And I don't know about you, but that was satisfying. And I've had quite a few messages from listeners saying, oh, I just... I just felt that punch for it, you know. I want. I was there with Sam swinging away. Kelly deserved that punch so much. Um, Bearing in mind, Kelly had just had a dalliance. Yes, I said the word dalliance <laughs> with Wayne um, in his jeep at the uh, back of the end of season party, and they're all in fancy dress. Yeah. Um, and the the big news, I suppose, that we're we're skitting around right now is the fact that the camp is closing. Or at least, yeah, that's the suspected uh, outcome, isn't it? Yeah, the suspicion. But as we know from from the um, the (laughs) post-credit scene, there was a phone call, a strange South African voice calling all the way from Dubai. And and what did he what did he want to tell us, Mike? What was the what was the message? Do you think? 
I would say the message was the fact that he is um, looking to make an investment and he's interested in camp holidays. And I think that's pretty much all we can say about that now. <laughs> it's just exciting that there's this little tiny seed growing, this hope just poking through the soil. After everything that's happened to everybody, there's this little seed of hope. So we're going to kick into the story. We're going to hear those little notes that, that we missed. Da, da, da. Um, <laughs> well, we haven't had in the movie <laughs> podcast. I've missed um, that. I've missed that little uh, jingle, to be honest with you. Uh, me too. Very much so. Um, and we're going to go in. So without further ado, Mike, I'm so excited. Let's head back to Camp Holidays and start our first scene of the Halloween special. Interior, Sam's Chalet, night. We pick up the story directly after the end of season party. The camera pans to the bed as we see two bodies entwined with each other. We hear Sam giggling as Adam rolls off her in a clumsy way. <laughs> that was quick. Uh, um, was it? Yeah, not in a bad way. It's just, it's been a long time coming. True. <clears throat> you did, you know, really quick. I don't know what came over me. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. They both stare at the ceiling, arms down their side. It suddenly seemed quite awkward, and the silence seemed to last for ages. Sam sighs dreamily and begins to cosy in, ready to go to sleep. I cannot believe you punched Kelly. This awakens Sam, and she bolts upright. The duvet slips down and Adam's eyes immediately fixate on her ample breast. <laughs> I know. I've never hit anyone in my life before. Mm -hmm. How's your hand? It's fine. A, a bit sore. We can go again in a minute when the cramp goes down. <laughs> <laughs> I meant from the punch. <laughs> they, they both laugh at this. Sam lies back down and cuddles into Adam. She had it coming, you know. Someone had to do something. She's not a good person at all. Just don't let me get on your bad side. That's some right hook you've got there, Rocky. Adam? Yeah? Can I tell you something? In confidence? Um, you, you love me? Sam looks at Adam in a semi-shocked way. Adam holds his gaze and after a few seconds starts laughing. Sam joins, but still a little unsure. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just, ki I'm just kidding. Oh, what is it? Thank fuck for that. Um, <laughs> not really. I was joking. Ad lib there. Um, Judy approached me in the rehearsal room this morning, and then we're going to do a little -da -da, -da -da, -da -da, <laughs> back in time. Interior rehearsal room earlier that day. Sam is singing loudly in the mirror to a backing track of the Grease 2 song, Cool Rider. She moves up and down the space, dancing, and is oblivious to Judy watching her from the doorway. Sam turns and reaches into the air, finishing the song with a power pose. Quietness settles in the studio, with the only noise being Sam's laboured breath. From behind her, we hear a slow hand clapping. The camera pans round to see Judy clapping as enthusiastically as she can muster. Sam looks embarrassed as Judy enters the echoey room. Your vocals have improved. I'm glad. You're one of the fewest to actually listen to my direction. Thank you. I've, I've been practising. Yes, I know, dear. I just watched you. Remember? There's an awkward silence as Judy looks at Sam up and down. There was clearly something on Judy's mind and she's weighing up her approach. So, Sam... What are your plans for next season? Well, I'm I'm hoping to come back, you know, do it, do another season, and maybe audition for some of the bigger shows if if I'm ready. Hmm. I'll be the judge of that. What are your ambitions? Ambitions? Yes. Also known as you know long term goals. You have thought that far ahead, haven't you? I, I want to sing, Judy. 
It's the only thing I've ever been good at. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You have got a lot better, perhaps even a talent, a good range and tone. We're putting together a house band for next year. The usual guitar, drummer, keyboards. We do require two vocalists, male or female. It's yours if you want. Is it the male or the female that should be an offer to you? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I, 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 you, like? I, I, <laughs> you know, we can go with they, them. It's fine. Whichever your pronouns are at this point. Sam looks shocked, which quickly becomes delight. Well? Oh, oh my God, yes. Yes, please. That, that will be a dream come true. Thank you, Judy. Thank you so much. Oh, don't be so dramatic. You'll have to work hard. Your look and style, dance and persona will require... Some changes. Maybe a hair uh, change to dress up that wholesome look you do so well. But <laughs> you have potential. I-, I won't let you down, Judy. I'll do whatever it takes, I promise. Keep it to yourself for now. We still have to announce it. Make sure your contact details are up to date during the off-season. Before Sam can respond, Judy turns and leaves the room. Sam stares at her reflection in the mirror, processing this news then smiles widely and jumps up and down, celebrating. Interior, Sam Shelley, night. To Sam and Adam, cuddling. Oh my God, that's amazing, Sam. Well, well done. Oh, you can't say anything, though. I won't. I just, I just hope I get to come back, you know, to see you sing on the main stage. Oh, you will. <sighs> With everything that's happened... I've been looking to get a job as a toilet cleaner. Next season is going to be amazing. You and me, starting afresh. No issues, no Kelly and no dramas. Come here, Rocky's ready for round two. Sam pulls Adam towards her and they begin kissing. (laughs) So we finally have got it on. Adam and Sam have done the deed. And uh, I'm coming and knocking if the caravan is rocking. Oh, wait, they're in a chalet. They're in a chalet Sorry. at the moment, yeah. The chalet, yeah. <laughs> now, now, Steve, for, the, for anyone that's never stayed in an old fashioned chalet before, I think we should describe what that looks like. Do you know the boiler room from a Nightmare on Elm Street? It's kind of like that, but with a bed in it. I think no, it only had one pipe that ran through <laughs> the, the sewage pipe that ran through the, the top of the, the ceiling. Yeah, from the chalets above, you had that their from the, from the ones above you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that would be there. So when you know when everyone's taking a crap because you hear that, <laughs> and then what would just start going. So usually, if you're in a double, it would be two adjoining rooms and one shared bathroom. If you're in a single, yeah. you would have one bathroom and one room. Yeah, um, which is always musty smelling as well. It always smelled a bit funny. Yeah, I think they sat empty a, a lot of the time, didn't they? You know, in the off season and stuff, and. They, they never were really very well aired. You weren't there. You weren't in them a lot. They were there to sleep in and, and I maybe... know what's worse, though. Sitting empty or with the people that was in that and sharing the same mattress as some of the... Um, what should I say? Those people looking to escape their, yeah. their lives. Yeah, let's say that um, those mattresses had like a sewn-in plastic sheet on the top of them, didn't they? So that, you know, you yeah. put a sheet on yourself yeah. and then you get into bed and slide off the end of it like it's some sort of toboggan. It was uh, it was pretty uh, pretty. In my, in my first year, I bought one sheet which was black and highly unfortunate actually because it shows everything. But I bought I had a one black sheet and one quilt cover. That was everything for my first year. And I mean, we, we're talking about saliva now, aren't we? We're talking about drooling in the night that obviously was making uh, a mess of your your sheet at that point. Um, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> So listen, let's let's recap a little bit on the, on what we what's just happened. So Sam and Adam, we've just said they they've got it on, but Sam has been offered the job as lead vocalist in the house band. How incredible an opportunity for someone am- who wants to be a singer! Am- amazing for Sam, but remember this happened before before it was told that the camp was closing down. So yeah. this was this was then. So who knows what's going to happen? Well, well exactly. I mean, if the, if the camp's closing, there's there's no opportunity for exactly. anybody to be in exactly. it, you know. And we don't know what the budget would look like, even if it is. So there might not be the facility to do that. So let's, I guess we can only go back, straight back into the script and hear what's going to happen. Wait, did now. you just say 
the budget, what the budget is going to look like. I said if it stays open for another season, we don't even know what the budget will look like. You've changed. So, you've, you've changed so much. <laughs> well, what can I say? It's it's just who <laughs> I am now. <laughs> you have to consider these things, you know. Will there be a band, an in-house band? Can they afford to do it? Or will they just, you know, will they get the camp coats operating the fairground rides? It's all a possibility. We just don't know. Not yet. Let's find out. Exterior, staff car park, next day. <laughs> day. <laughs> day as well. Just in case know you didn't know, next it's day. the next day. 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 Um, Alan, wearing his suit and tie, Looks surprisingly fresh. Walks to his car and pops his boot. As he puts his suit carrier and briefcase away, (laughs) Mark pulls up alongside him, ready to start his day. Mark's expression is grim and downbeat. Alan greets Mark with a smile and a flash of yellowing teeth. Leaving so soon. Mark, my boy. Morning. Glad I managed to catch you. Really? Looks like you're making the, uh, you know, great escape. (sighs) Nothing of the sort. Alan flashes another smile to Mark and winks at him. Mark's expression changes from grim to curious. Has, Has something happened? I can't say too much, but put it this way, plans are afoot. I'm pulling the board together this very morning. Alan, what does that mean? I'll call you later. All will be revealed. Well, that's well and good, Alan, but I have a room full of camp coasts and staff in there hoping to get another season. I was hoping you'd be uh, there to help break the news. You know, what do we say to them? (laughs) Say nothing. Carry on as normal. But, Mark, trust me. Alan gets in his car and turns the engine on. Mark stands his ground and stares expectantly at Alan. After a beat, Alan rolls down the window. It squeaks loudly. What do I tell my team, Alan? They heard last night. Tell them... Tell them... Oh, bugger it. Tell them to gear up for another season. We have a buyer! Alan smiles and taps his nose, winks at Mark and quickly reverses out. Gary, who is sweeping near the bins looks up and sees Alan's jag reversing too quickly towards him. Gary drives out as the jag hits the bottle, knocking the bottles... What? (laughs) (laughs) I think it hits the bin. I think it must be hits the bin, but we've written jag hits the bottle, knocking the bottle. bottle. (laughs) (laughs) He's hitting the bottle when he was hitting the bottle last night, wasn't he? So obviously he's back to hitting the bottle. It's true. Yeah, so he hits the bin bottle, the bottle bin, (laughs) knocking bottles all over the car park. Alan screeches off. Hopefully the car does anyway. It's not just him going. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> that would be that would be weird. That's the proper breakdowns kicking in. Gary picks himself up and looks at Mark, who is oblivious. Don't mind me, fucking knob. <laughs> we have a glimmer of hope, and you know, Alan seems excited about the prospect. So he's obviously had a conversation with um this this mysterious voice on the end of the phone well, and you're talking about voice i'm i'm very very confused about what voices i'm doing right now because it's been so long i'm trying to <laughs> convey the character i'm like what, is, what that, is that how they, they really have? sounded yeah <laughs> exactly. no, i think mark mark mark, mark, is, was, uh, nice, mark was kind of like alan was more like that judy more smoky so i you know i'm <laughs> Just <laughs> you know, when Adam's just smoky, like, it sounded like you sounded like a hippie. Then it was a juicy, <laughs> smoky. Yeah. So this is really, this is a really weird shakeout for not having done these characters for so long, and then trying to remember. All right, what accent did they have? How did yeah. they say their lines? What tone did they convey? So hopefully, we're kind of hitting the mark here. Yeah. And well, yeah. Well, hopefully, Mark was hitting the mark at least. We, I think, he was right back there. Well, um, I think he's hitting a bottle. Like, how many bottles could we say in one sentence? It's just <laughs> you'd have thought our grammar would have got better in eighteen years, but apparently not. Clearly not. No, no Clearly not when not. we're still writing, a bad but, script. Still but you know what? Script. That was again. It was that thing that we said we will not re-edit this. It is in its raw form. So whatever we wrote when it came from our brain pans out onto the page, 
it's literally there. So, you know, we should have covered that at the very start, actually, to say that, you know, the rule that we have is we write and we write one draft yeah. and that's it. Whatever we write, we record because that's in tone with the whole bad scripts piece. So yeah. there you go, guys, listening to this. We are reading and and performing as written um, when we were doing this. So exactly. fabulous. Let's let's move on, shall we, and see what becomes of the broken hearted interior green room morning um now if anybody doesn't know what a green room is um you you may have heard may have seen them on um, you know like tv shows and things where they have the where the guests wait to go on and and you know and and cast suite to go on and you see it like on the Jonathan Ross show there where they have all the guests sat backstage in the green room. So anybody who doesn't know, that's what a green room is. And and often these kind of resorts have one that the entertainers can relax in between shows and and you know check out where all of their information is. Steve, uh, you know. we need to talk about why it's called a green room. You can't not talk about a green room without the entomology of a green room. So oh. Um, Mike, give us give us a you give us the expert um guide to what a, why a green room is called a green room. a green room okay well yes i will well if you put yourself back a few hundred years you will know that um there was no electricity back then to light up a stage and performers would go on that stage and usually be lit up with um limelight or as as the same goes put in your limelight it was green light that would lift them up and the only way they could get their vision back after coming back on stage was to go into a green painted room, henceforth called the green room. And that's the only way you could equalize your vision uh, to go back into uh, into normal daylight. And that's why it's called the green room. They are historically green. And I think that's just such a fascinating thing that that becomes becomes such a part of culture now that, you know, it was it was to return people's eyesight to normal, you know, um, and and so many people know what a room is, the green room is. Now everyone knows what a room is, hopefully, but everyone <laughs> know, but people know what a green room is, and and now they know why. So fantastic! Thank you for that nugget. From there, Mike. <laughs> Much You're appreciated. welcome. You're welcome. Keep just I'll, I'll keep them coming. Brilliant. I say that to all the girls. <laughs> I was waiting for that. <laughs> <laughs> which they say to you um robin dan donna pete and several other camp coats are, and dancers are filling up the green room some look a bit worse for wear from the night before still still nursing hangovers i'll miss this room said dan the green room there's nothing but a coffee machine a couple of dated mags and some disgusting old chairs here I will, Robin, mate. Nostalgia and all that. I remember getting off with Donna on that sofa over there. Dan! Not all we did. As he says this, Adam and Sam walk into the gaze and scrutiny of everyone. They're holding hands and Dan gives Adam a knowing wink. Adam responds with a nod and wry smile. Oh, look at you two. It's about fucking time. Bit bloody late, though. Sam laughs. (laughs) Has anyone been in yet? We were supposed to start at nine, but no one's been in yet. That's weird. Mars usually prompts, and I bet this is literally Wayne's most favourite part of the year. As Adam says this, Judy walks past the green room, stops and steps in. Everyone but Adam sees. He notices and turns around. We'll be with you soon. Be patient. Judy looks at Adam. She leaves. Dan is trying not to laugh while Adam looks embarrassed. (laughs) Okay, so bear in mind we wrote this, you know, less than a month ago. I I don't think we consider the fact that I would be doing three characters in a row there and not introduce you any of them. I count count with four characters in a row there. (laughs) So we had Dan and Robin... Um, talking at first, and then Donna was in there too, and then Sam came in too. And yeah, like, so four, four oh, characters. Oh, oh God, yeah. How, we, how we do you think learn. you did? How do you think you did? Uh, um, I thought it was a C minus. To be honest, <laughs> 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 it must do better. Was the was the <laughs> feedback to myself?
Interior Entertainment's office. Morning. Wayne and Karen are huddled yes. over the desk. <laughs> What's that for? Sorry. Yes. Karen, my favourite character of all time, is now back. Yes. Wayne and Karen are huddled over a desk filled with files and contracts. Karen is looking intensely at them, whilst Wayne is eating an overfilled bacon and egg sandwich, dripping yolk on the paperwork. It's an American. Wayne, with a mouthful of food. What the bloody hell? That's what I keep saying to you. It's in American. Well, how did this happen? Well, now that update to Windows 98, it's changed the settings to American, didn't it? Judy walks in and they both look up at her. I've stalled them. Karen, explain what that means. As if I was a child. <laughs> it, it's the computer. It's American. Mark now enters the office. All three turn to stare at him. Mark surveys the room and sighs. What's happened? Well, Mark, man, we well, got a computer upgrade when they put it in American. <laughs> we fucked some of the contracts up, right? The dates are reversed, which means half the bloody camp coats are employed till after New Year. Wayne extends a contract and Mark takes it from him, scrutinising it. He sees the error. The month and date are swapped. American, you see, like I said. <laughs> She turned it to Bruce, Bruce Forsyth then for a minute. The gang, the gang. No! <laughs> there, wasn't, there wasn't enough tongue. <laughs> Just didn't turn it to American, you see, like Forsyth. I said. There you go. There you go. American, you see, like I said. Wayne? It's your line. It is me. That's right. <laughs> I'm waiting for you to kick in. I don't know. Jesus, Karen. How many contracts have you messed up this year? Two major fuck-ups in a season. That's a record, even for you. Karen's lip begins to tremble. Judy steps over and pats her on the arm. Not helpful, Wayne. Karen, what are the options here? We can pay them off, I suppose. It's not going to matter anyway. We're closing. Mark carries on looking at the contract. He doesn't look away, but talks very quietly. Just keep them on. Just keep them on. There's jobs around the camp that need doing. We'll, we'll just have to make it work. What do you know? <laughs> <laughs> Not much. We may get another season. Alan, look, he's got something up his sleeve. I've just been told business is normal. Till we hear otherwise. <laughs> Business is as usual till we hear otherwise. Mark claps his hands loudly, making Karen jump and yell out. All right. Sorry, I was a bit too premature then. <laughs> so let's get this over with. Who's first? Interior, green room, mid morning. Dan, Donna, Sam. Adam and the other entertainers are sat extras. around waiting. Just extras. They are extras. We don't really know who they are. They were just, they're just there. <laughs> we didn't. We didn't. We never mentioned, we didn't we never mentioned anyone before. It's like the red them. shirt guy from Star Trek. You know, yeah. the one that has to be killed off. Yeah, we're not going <laughs> to. We promise we won't. We won't kill them with an alien. But they, yeah, they're just going to sit around in the background. It's like on Heidi High when you just see them walking around. In the other background. people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> other, yeah. That's just lazy Camp writing. Camp. In the, in the credits, it'll be camp coat number three. Dan, Donna, Sam, Adam and the other entertainers are sat around waiting. Some time appears to have passed since Robin was called in to learn his fate. Have you ever farted in a lift? Oh, don't be so vulgar. And yes. Really? Tell us. No, it's embarrassing. Well, we're bored. Dan? Come on, Donna. Shit. Look, as Sam says this, a camp coat walks past in tears with another comforting her. That's Sophie, Dan, without thinking, shouts. Sophie, what's happened? Sophie looks into the green room and shakes her head, then runs off crying. Donna chases after her. Fuck. Robin walks in and sits down. He looks annoyed. 
Are you okay, Robin? Yeah. Well? Well, what? You know what, Dicko. You staying or what? Yes, I'm staying. The gang cheer and start clapping. Hey! hey. <laughs> oh, fuck off, you lot. <laughs> Wave his... Robin waves his hands. So why are you so pissed off? Because I have to spend my Christmas here. I'm stuck till January. What do you mean, Robin? I just need some time. Good luck, everyone. Robin gets up abruptly and leaves. The fuck is that all about? Karen walks in and scans the room. Adam, follow me. (laughs) Do I have to? Yeah, you do. Come on. Adam cuddles Sam. Wish me luck. Good luck. Adam gives Sam a look. He then leaves and follows Karen. A bit creepy. <laughs> Wish me luck. <laughs> so, so why why do we think that? And I, and I guess we had this conversation when we wrote. Why why do we think that that um, Robin's pissed off about having to stick around? You know, well, did... because his contract is in American. <laughs> well, we know that, but. Um, you know, and there is that whole point of you know the the month and the date thing being switched over, which has caused this problem. But why is that so annoying to him? Because you know, at the end of the day, he's got another probably two months worth of work. You know, he's going to be paid. Um, but maybe, maybe he doesn't. Maybe he's family orientated. Maybe he wants to see his mum over Christmas. Well, I and... think as well as you know. I mean, you know that you you start to look forward to getting some time off and and going home. You know, you've been saving up all summer and. Mm. saving what money you can not that we ever did that because we didn't but <laughs> um you you just you, it's time to be with family bearing in mind like these guys have suddenly been told you're not going home for christmas you're now mm. contracted so you have to stay and we don't know what that means and whether we'll get time off we don't know what they're going to be doing we don't know whether camp has been saved i know the cast don't know that and the camp coast don't know that but i think that um if i would robin I think Robin is quite proud. He's obviously got an idea in his mind. And he was one of the guys that started quite early on with everybody else. So I think for him, he had his heart set on going home. We've not mentioned Pete and and what Robin's plans were with Pete. He's clearly got something there as well. So, um, yeah. Um, And again, another great job because you're not only doing the characters, Steve, you're also doing the narration as well, which is quite (laughs) a lot to jump between. So we we did forget that. So you're doing six (laughs) different voices all in the same scene. Oh dear, I feel like um like what's his name? James McAvoy in that uh in that film. Um what, what, <laughs> where he plays all the different uh, personalities. Um, yeah, in yeah, but you, you may feel like him, but you're certainly not him. Okay. That's if, okay. We get, if we can get James McAvoy to come on, on this show, then James, if you're listening, please get in touch with us. Um I will happily replace you with Steve. Um and myself. Um <laughs> you'll have point. yeah that's fine if, if james mcavoy wants to come on the show and do my role that's fine i'll happily you, step you aside can find us, you can happens. find us on twitter you can find us on facebook you can find us on lots of different things and uh please just please get in touch for the love of god please get in touch <laughs> you can also <laughs> you can also find us on some dodgy forums but that's not the point anyway moving on we'll continue with our script and see what happens next Interior, Mark's office. Morning. Mark and Wayne are sat behind the desk. Karen enters, followed by a nervous-looking Adam. Wayne looks concerned, and Karen, noticing, pulls a large sausage roll out of her bag. We haven't got any brown sauce, but you'll have to make do with all and days. Where'd you get that from? Uh, Jeff on the fairground makes it. Wayne reaches over and takes the roll. Mark looks on. Wait, does does wait, does Jeff make the hollandaise or does he make the roll or does he make both? Can we clear that up? Because that's not that, <laughs> I think that he must make not both clear things. at all. What is we think... make like um, what is the hollandaise sauce? What's in it? <laughs> <laughs> it's gotta be the hollandaise, isn't it? Because that's what he's asking about. You know, he's saying where'd you get the, where'd you get that from? Um, but it's quite nondescript. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, Maybe what does that mean? Both, but I'm not sure I'd be wanting hollandaise sauce on my um, on my sausage roll. I don't know about you. See, this is it. When you get lost in the writing, if you get little points like this, that only when you read it back, you go, <laughs> wait, has he made the, has Jeff made the roll? Mm-hmm. Jeff made the hollandaise. 
Um, it, it could be either, couldn't it? I think could be. Let's leave it to the audience to decide what the, whether that we think that Jeff is the culinary genius that's making his homemade hollandaise sauce, or if he's getting you know some pre-made um, sausage rolls from the uh, from the off license down you, the road. Would you would you take a would you take a a bite sausage of from um, a stranger? Je- Jeff's hollandaise sausage or Jeff's sausage that comes with hollandaise. <laughs> You know what? That sounds like a a um, loaded question. Um, <laughs> I don't know what you're trying to insinuate yeah, there. Well, we don't have the excuse of saying we wrote this 18 years ago, so it's we okay. Just... We wrote this like in in August, 18 days so... ago. Yeah, what's going on? <laughs> no, I, I, and I think the problem is like we just like we've already established we're not reading it back. So the... <laughs> all the brain farts that happen during the writing process, and they're just sort of landing on us now but that's fine that's fine it's all good that's what we're here for that's what our listeners want to hear is you know two grown men making idiots of themselves okay wayne reaches over and takes the role mark looks on what sauce is that hollandaise sake it'll do is it here you could call it a benny dick (laughs) <laughs> what okay i think i think the link to eggs benedict with hollandaise sauce is what she's trying to get at and obviously uh clever a hot you know a sausage roll and the phallicness of it she's gone benny dick a benny but, dick yeah a hot dog with hollandaise sauce a benny dick there we go you've heard it here first it's a brand guys. new dish and please have one the, the oh, fact that we had to explain that joke means it doesn't really land anyway. So. <laughs> a Benny Dick. Anyway. Oh, dear. Um, yes. Um, thank you, Karen. Um, Adam, have a seat. Wayne dips his sausage roll into the jar of hollandaise sauce and takes a big bite. The white creaminess drips off his chin and onto the desk. He notices and does nothing. Adam fixates on the globule as he sits down. <laughs> when does he sit down on the globule? <laughs> he just, he just sits down. He doesn't sit on the just globule. He's just, he's just fascinated down. by the globule. Sits down. Okay. Unless that's Wayne's new nickname, the globule. <laughs> Seems the quite globule. apt. I think it's apt. Yeah. Uh, thanks for coming in, Adam. And uh, we hope you enjoyed the party last night. Adam is about to answer when Wayne interrupts. With a mouthful of food, sounds sarcastic. In the thick of the action last night, wasn't you, mate? Mark, ignoring this passive-aggressive comment. So firstly, Adam, how do you think you perform this year? Adam, nervously shuffles in his chair. That's a question you can respond. <clears throat> if I'm being honest, it's, uh, it's been a bit up and down. I know there are times where you've been disappointed in me, but since our chat mark, I really feel like I turned a corner. But I have improved. I definitely feel like I have more to give. Like what? Uh, well, I mean, like, I've got more to learn. Like what? Obviously, I was disappointed with the way things were going. I won't lie, Adam. It didn't look good for you. I'm glad you've taken advice on board and more importantly, improved. That being said, as we told you at the start, you were judged on the whole season and we only retain a certain number of people each year. Keeping it fresh, bringing in some fresh meat. I mean, new blood. You have shown to be capable and we like your initiative with the boy band. It's proved very popular. Adam, still staring at the smudge of sauce. Taking all that into consideration, <laughs> we'd like to offer you a place with us next season. <laughs> Adam bolts up and looks completely relieved. A smile spreads across his face. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mark. Wayne, thanks. Oh, you won't regret it. There's more good news. You'll have to the pleasure of seeing me daily till the 11th of January. What do you mean? There's been a slight oversight on contracts. You were due to finish on the 1st of November but you're actually contracted till the 11th of January. So what what does that mean? What it means is that you're staying. But 
Isn't isn't the camp closed? Oh, we've got plenty to do. Don't you worry. Lots of fun. Menial tasks. What if I have other plans? We we can't legally make you stay. However, basically, you would have to leave. And if you don't see out your contract, you won't be able to come back next season. Company rules. Adam looks at both Wayne and Mark. Mark nods his head. It's true, I'm afraid. Are you staying? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Christmas on camp. <laughs> It'll be fun. Okay. Well, thank you, Adam. Um, see Karen in the office and she'll fill, fill you in on what happens next. Adam stands up and offers his hand to Mark, who shakes it. He then does the same to Wayne, whose hand is covered in hollandaise. It makes a wet, slapping noise as he shakes Adam's hand. Adam tries to hide his disgust. Wayne doesn't seem to notice. <laughs> Thanks, mate. I've told you already. I'm not your mate. So got Adam job. has got his job. Yes, it's incredible. But um, we thought for a minute he might not. You know, Sam was worried. He was worried that it wasn't going to happen. But he's there and he's back for next season. So, you know, the excitement can begin. Any thoughts so far? No, I mean, it's good to see Wayne being his usual dickish self. And, you know, I think Mark's going through the motions. He's, he's I, You know, what I like about Mark is he, he's, Mind is obviously on other things. He's obviously worrying about bigger and better things. He just wants to get kind of get this done. So he's not, you know, um, building up too much. He's not really a people person, is he? Although he's like in charge of everybody, he's he's very organised. But I think he struggles with the emotional connections with with the camp coats and that. It's it's a weird one. I just think he's got a lot on his shoulders. Um, I think he's he's got a lot to think about. Well, let's get back into it and hear what uh, what goes on next. Interior, green room, morning. Adam enters the green room, to which the camp coats are looking at him in anticipation. He looks po-faced with his head to the floor. What did they say? Yeah, mate, are you coming back? Adam appears sad and looks at Sam. She reads this and looks sad too wrapping her arms around him. I'm sorry, Adam. It'll be okay. I know. You'll just have to put up with me for another year! <laughs> hey! Dan cheers and Sam yelps, playfully sla- slapping Adam on the arm. You get, you really had me going there. Hey, you fucking dancer. Like Robin, I'm staying on as well. If you do too, Sam, then we get to spend Christmas together. Sam takes Adam's hand and looks at the lost. It'll be amazing. Me and you, our very first Christmas, right? Sam scrunches up her face and looks down. Why is, why is your hand so sticky? Before Adam can answer, Karen walks in. Sam, love. Sam follows Karen, smiling and with a skip in her step. Interior, Mark's office, morning. Sam is already seated and the meeting has been underway for a few minutes. Wayne is sitting facing Sam sideways on with an expectant look on his face. Your voice is phenomenal. You've had a glowing feedback from Judy. Our guests love you and you're proven to be both reliable and one of our top camp coats, Sam. Thank you, Mark. I've learned so much this year and you... I've had the happiest time. It's, I'm just really looking forward to taking the next step in my career. Um, did, did Judy mention our conversation? Mark sighs. Wayne smirks. However, we have to talk about last night, Sam. Sam's face drops. Striking a teammate is very serious. Interior, green room, morning. Dan and Donna are snuggling in a couple of chairs. <laughs> They've got a couple of chairs to snuggle. How do you snuggle in a couple of chairs? In a couple I mean, of I, chairs? Yeah, I, I can understand this. Are they inside chair. the chairs? They, I, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what they've done. Is it like when you were a kid on your holidays where you'd go to sleep and you'd have one, you'd have like 
two chairs facing each other and you put your sleep I think they're, sleep yeah, they're coats. proper like hard wooden chairs they're just snuggling <laughs> into a couple of chairs um but they're not snuggling with each other they're no. just snuggling into a couple of chairs i think they're just getting cozy <laughs> we'll make it work hun. you won't forget me will you we'll talk every day and you'll get time off to visit me besides i get to send you a nice present Dan shouts over at Adam. All right, are we bunking together, roommates, homie? Yeah, yeah? Maybe. Well, depends what Sam's doing. First choice here, mate. I'm not having a sloppy seconds. They both laugh. Sam quietly enters the room and sits in a chair. Oi, oi, here she is. Adam turns to face her and smiles. I think uh, Adam has already picked out your Christmas tree, love. Sam looks at Adam. <laughs> he's he's joking. Well, I've I've been fired. It's it's over. I can't come back. End of episode. Dum 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 the end of the end of the Halloween special, um, in terms of the script writing. So, from ecstasy to despair in in five quick scenes. You know, I mean, wow. So let's let's talk about it a little bit then. Um, so we were really worried then at the beginning that Sam was going to stay on and be in this band, and then Adam wasn't going to make it back because of all his tardiness and and what have you. And it's completely flipped on its head, and those those actions of smacking Kelly in the mouth have have meant there's there's no way back. Why why do you think that is? Well, I don't know. I mean, um, obviously, you know, we can say we either thought far ahead or haven't thought far ahead. There's a reason why we haven't seen Kelly in this in this particular episode. But where the smoke, there's fire, and at the end of the day, every one of that party saw. Um, Sam punched Kelly in the face, and I think that's it. It doesn't need a lot to 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 retribute action on that one, you know. And I think as a, as any company, they would have to take they'd have to take some kind of they'd have to do something. They'd have to make a decision, you know. They couldn't let it go. Um, and I think it's Sam's naivety, maybe that mm. didn't think. Oh, maybe she should have got ahead of it. Maybe she should have had a conversation. She just yeah. didn't. She just. She was riding a high based on a conversation with you, which makes yeah. uh, sense when you think about her punching um, Kelly in the last season. It wasn't just about Adam. It was more about how she was feeling, and she was, like, feeling a little bit untouchable at that moment yeah. in time. Well, this is it. And if you think about the other fights that happened, they've they've been off site, haven't they? They've been in their yeah, at, yeah. off time. So the, the big fight when, when Robin was attacked was all, it all happened off in the town and what have you. So... That has no bearing really on 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 disciplinary matters. But at the end of the day, like you say, they were all there. They all saw a puncher. Regardless of the reason, you can't go around punching your colleagues and then expect to have a, a job at the end of the day. So as unfortunate as it is, it creates a whole new dynamic going into uh, well, it, what we can announce just now. A dynamic, a dilemma. Yeah. A dilemma of what's going to happen. Like as Sam has finally got with Adam. Adam's finally got with Sam. Uh, Adam's clearly got designs on what he wants to do with Sam. He's running. He's probably about fifteen steps ahead of their relationship. Yeah. To be honest with you, which um, again, I'm just wondering whether Adam has. Um, you know, Adam's is he a romantic? Is he? You know, he's 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 gone too far ahead of where they're at. I mean, it was like, they've been together 24 hours and he's like, we're yeah. having Christmas together. It's me and you. Yeah. Well, but then you've got to think of it. So think of it like this. So think back to, you know, season one, the, we talked about it, didn't we? That the, the speeding up of relationships in this environment, that everything is at 200 miles an hour. I think we talked in our guest special with some of our, um, with the Dan, with Dan and Fudge it's and true. Brian, it's true. And we said that you know all of this stuff is really intense and it happens so quickly. They've been living together since like March, or these guys. So they're in November. Uh, it's the end of October. Must be like the first of November now. This to them is very much, um, you know, they've been around each other for long. He's had designs on her since the very beginning, and really 
so he's probably planned this out in his mind a thousand times. Um, so I pro- to him, it doesn't feel too quick or too soon because they've been living in each other's pockets for so long. It's just the the actual carnal act of being together that has has happened now. So they've kind of stepped into a a super fast forwarded relationship at this point. Twenty four hours. Because that no, not even that twelve hours. Well, it's been twelve hours. Look at look at Dan and Donna. I mean, he was doing the boy band for her after twelve hours. So it's true. Maybe this is true. So it's very in keeping, isn't it? But <laughs> I suppose the, the the test is this, right? When people listen to this and think, does it feel the same? Does it feel different? Hopefully, it doesn't. And we've written it in in largely the same way that we wrote our original ones. But as we as we've already covered in this episode, um, this was. Um, this, this was a first draft, no going back, no changing mm-hmm. things. What, what we've written is what we've written, mistakes and all. Um, and, and it came easier than I thought it was going to do, actually. Yeah. And I think because we, we know these people now, we know these characters almost write themselves when we're talking now. When we talk about, we create the scenarios and then those characters, they kind of jump off the page themselves, don't they? And, and they have their own personas and personalities and, you know, I've had conversations with people on on social media about, you know, the the the, the character types, the the personalities of these fictional people, <laughs> um, which is bizarre, you know, as a, as a character that's come out out of our heads that 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 that's happening. But um, what I am pleased to say is, and I think we can announce it now, is we're going to have. You're not going to have to wait till February for season two, because that's when that's coming. Instead, we are going to bring you several, and I'm not giving away just exactly how many yet, Christmas specials to keep you happy to find out what's going on at Last Resort over the close season. What's next for Adam, for Sam, for Dan, for Donna, for all of the gang? What will that bring? And what adventures and mischief can they get up to with no guests around? And a lot of time on their hands. I think um, that should be pretty exciting. Um, Mike, this is the Halloween special. And I'm very aware that we have done absolutely nothing with any kind of Halloween theme (laughs) at all in this episode. And, you know, in our previous uh, in season one, we did quite a lot of anecdotes and, and talking about our own experiences. Have you got, you know, on that theme, have you got any spooky tale, any true spooky tale from your past that you could share with us uh, and you could tell us that, that, you know, we on a Halloween theme that we can uh, that we can uh, appease our listeners with? I'm not sure I have many scary tales to regale. I did have this recurring dream when I was a kid um, that when I was around five or six years old, I remember being in this attic room um, and and it was so vivid. Like it was a real life story. I was wearing a pair of pants and a vest and just remember this swirling fog in front of me, like just, just this moving kind of displaced air and fog and hearing my name being whispered to me over and over again, Michael, 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 it still gives me goosebumps even now. And, and I remember once, um, I spoke to my mother about it and said, look, um, I've had this like a recurring memory or dream of this. And she was like, oh, yeah, that really happened. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the house we lived in was haunted. And um, and there was a spirit there that was after you. And uh, and I, and I <laughs> immediately remember going, yeah, all right. Uh, <laughs> That's reassuring. <laughs> Thanks for that. No, but that, that I did. And even to now, I still have that dream every so often where I see this big swirling kind of, foggy mist and my name being called out from within it um that's the only real story i've got other than watching poltergeist when i was eight and being scared to literally within an inch of my life just watching that film so whether the two are connected i don't know but uh, i don't remember caroline in a pair of pants and a vest mm-hmm. yeah what about you steve well this 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 story is clean Caroline. Um, no. Outside in, Caroline. Outside <laughs> in. That was Poltergeist 3. Nice one. Very, very bizarre oh, reference. Oh, it's the lad. Yeah. Lad. <laughs> yeah. 
Do you remember the song? Do you remember the the, the creepy song from Paul Guest too? No, I, 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 not offhand, not offhand, no. God is in his holy temple. Earthly thoughts, be silent now. It's always stuck in my mind because it's so <laughs> creepy. Do you know what? I never thought that you'd be the first one to sing on the podcast, but it is it has happened. Cheers, mate. Um, what about your horror tale? story? What about yours? Um, well, well it's, it's not a horror story. It's a spooky tale. So, um, Michael. No, it it had nothing to do with um, the thriller video. It was no, it was um, when when I left uh, Butlins and moved down to near that London to uh, pursue further activities. And before we went um, abroad um, to work, which is a whole nother story, um, I took a part time job, and then that became sort of a full time job, as well as many. Um, jobbing performers will know who end up working in the service industry i was working as the assistant steward in a working man's club um way down in kent and um i was uh it it was during the first world war this this working man's club had been used as a um military hospital you know for uh for treating um the soldiers the wounded soldiers when they came back um and you know, upstairs they had a, a snooker room, and that was like a ward um, area. Um, and we had um, quite a lot of guys that drank in the working and stuff that wouldn't go in the snooker room on their own. They just refused to. And I'm talking big, scary guys that you know um, they were bailiffs and 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 you know some dodgy characters too. But they would not go in the snooker room. But that, that was by the by. They just, they just didn't like it. Now, bear in mind, when you're a steward or an assistant steward in a place like this, you spend a lot of time in these buildings on your own. Five, six, seven o'clock in the morning, you're letting the draymen in, you're doing all of the um, stocking up and what have you. So one morning I was in the cellar, and this cellar had a big, long corridor that went all the way down um, the building to a secondary cellar that was underneath the function room. And along this corridor there was just rows of crates of beers, you know, like bottle beers and stuff. Um, and I'm filling up a crate with the stuff to restock a fridge, um, putting them all in there. And it's those real like horrible fluorescent lights, you know, really bright, horrible lights that are really stale. So I'm filling these things up um, and uh, someone wanted to walk past me. So as you do, when it's a, a narrow corridor, you lean in, let them walk past. And so I saw, you know, like workman's boots, like hobnail boots, old fashioned workman's boots walk past me. And I was like, just lean out of the way. And I thought, wait a minute, I'm the only person here. And I was about to sort of accost who was ever walk, whoever was walking past me. They shouldn't be there. So I turned in the direction and literally just walked past me, turned in the direction of the boots. And there was nobody there at all. And I'd clear as day seen those feet walk past me. And I'd heard the clump, clumping coming and felt the presence of someone walking behind me. And then there was no one there. And I, I got a little bit nervous and <laughs> went back upstairs till the uh, till the cleaning girls had turned up a few hours later. Uh, and just made Did you feel better with the cleaning girls there? I mean, I think just a bit of company sometimes when you're in these situations is always good, isn't it? But uh it was, yeah, it was a kind of a brown trouser moment when you realise, <laughs> when you think about it afterwards, you go, what the hell was that? So if anybody can explain that, you know, any sceptics, they can explain what that mean, you know, what happened there. Um, but I guarantee you I well, saw I those. wonder if, if anyone else who works for that place has had a similar experience to you, Steve. You never know. It's possible. Um, you know, when, when these places have seen such action, um, you know, I mean, Chas and Dave played there. I mean, that's going to leave a mark on the place. Um, so, yeah, that was that was pretty spooky. Um, the I do have one more if we've got time. What do you reckon? It's our podcast main time. <laughs> so um, the house that I lived in as a kid, um, we had a lounge diner situation. They weren't necessarily um, connected. They had a window through to them. So if you were sat at the breakfast bar in the kitchen, you were looking through into a um, dining room come lounge right through the house. So it was kind of like to let the light read, 
right through the whole building. Um, and I'm sat at the breakfast bar eating. Everybody else was upstairs. And I looked through and stood in the corner of the living room was um, what I thought was a miner, had a helmet, really big eyes, and was just looking at me and started to walk towards the other side of the window that I was on. Now, I just thought there was a man in the house. So I ran upstairs. I mean, I must have been about nine this time this point run upstairs mom mom there's a man in the house there's a man in the house i told you she comes running downstairs you know with like a slipper in her hand or something and tries to chase this guy off nobody there doors locked there's nobody in the house and it must have been about three years later there's um our next door but one neighbors um were an elderly couple who had actually moved into those houses when they were built in the 1940s, they were uh, an elderly couple at this point. And they said, um, you know, completely, like I say, three years later, not thought any more of it. And um, they said, oh, yes, I remember when your house was built because that's when that there was that accident and that guy died. And I went, what? They said, yeah, um, either side of the fireplace where the, um, they had the little alcoves, um, he was putting uh, wiring in underneath it and somebody put a big heavy stone on the on the top and he couldn't get out and he died he suffocated he died um and and i was like what what you know that someone died in my house but, but then it started to make sense i thought back to this guy i'd seen and he had like a, a light on his helmet which if you're working underground you're going to need to be able to see especially in the 40s there's going to be a like a you know a sort of a head torch um if he's suffocated or something like that's happened his eyes are going to be you know the wide eyes is kind of explained so you know i'm not saying that's what happened but it was kind of weird that it all married up to exactly the sort of the part of the room that that he'd been in when it had happened so yeah, it was. Uh, wow, it was a strange one. That very room that you've slept in as well, Mike. When uh, yeah, I don't think here. I'm sleeping again after hearing your two <laughs> horror stories. <laughs> so, <laughs> those, those are my my spooky happenings. You know. Um, okay. Well, look to to bring our our two things together then, as it is Halloween. Favorite horror movie of all time. Ooh. See, that's that's really difficult because there's quite a lot. You know, and you, it depends whether you're in classic or, or uh, you know, more... Just personal more choice. Personal um, choice. I think one that scared me the most, and probably not for the right reasons, but because of my own phobias, was probably The Descent. You know, um, the, the, the cave, uh, cave uh, caving movie. Um, I think because the I... The Spelunking. I'd, yeah, <laughs> The Spelunking. Um, because of the fact that I don't, like the whole kind of claustrophobic thing the the cave diving and stuff that that's like <gasps> to me so and then to have creatures living in that in the dark that was just like yeah no i'm i'm, I'm good thanks anyway what about yourself Do you know, i'm gonna go for a for a more of a modern one as well actually and i think one of the probably very underrated but spawn lots of sequels but i'm gonna say the original the conjuring is probably my favorite ghost demonic possession -y, uh, horror film because I think the build up to that is absolutely fantastic if I'm going more old school then I would uh, Poltergeist is always going to be up there it's yeah. got a little bit silly um, but uh, great Halloween I, I, yeah but as you know Halloween is my favourite time of year it's when the leaves change and the, the season changes and it gets kind of everything gets a little bit damp I like that and everything gets golden and brown and <laughs> <laughs> it's always my my most favorite time of year before everything gets really cold yeah. um so there we go it's it's that hot hot cup of cocoa and a and a nice warm fireplace that it's uh, when you can pull the jumpers out and feel good about wearing jumpers again that's it mike you are a jumper connoisseur we know that you know i love, we'll, a, I love a good jumper we do, really you do. do you do <laughs> and on that note i think we can draw a halloween special to a close uh thank you once again for joining us we hope you've enjoyed our return to the last resort and to our camp coats we hope you've had a fabulous halloween and we look forward to seeing you again at christmas for some more specials 
we will return to the script. We will return to the fun and the games that they have at, at camp holidays. So, um, as always, I'm going to leave the last word with Mr. Garlia. What are your final words for this episode? Benny's dick. Goodbye! Bad Scripts was written and performed by Mike Garlia and Steve Jones. A Beach Tide production.